Hello everybody, welcome to another True Review. Today I'm bringing you Squish and the Corrupted Crystal on the Xbox One. Releases on the 4th of September. I have no actual Xbox pricing as of yet, but a quick look on Steam. It's priced at $10.99 on Steam and usually we get uh, charged more than what Steam users do. So, uh, it's a case of watch this space really. So what we have with Squish is a fast paced platformer as it describes itself in the description of the game. Now Squish, I'm not sure what Squish is meant to be, it looks like some kind of uh, jelly baby cross of a rabbit in my opinion. And you've got a hub world here which you need a certain amount of crystals to get into these worlds and we'll get into one of these worlds now. You have to, for some bizarre reason, have to press X to unlock each of these worlds when you have the required amount of crystals and then again bizarrely have to hold the left trigger down and A to actually access the worlds. A little bit unusual why that is the case. And this is one of the levels here. So it's pretty much standard uh, basic platforming fair. You jump, you collect your crystals, you've got wall jumping which is here, then if you hold the button down when you're near a ledge and it says there, you kind of like do a little flick up off the ledge. Uh, very hard to do at speed but, um, oops, good recovery there. But yeah, very hard to do at speed, but uh, it does it does help you in some levels. Now you then have export to run, which makes you go faster and lets you do these larger leaps. And finally, you've got the right, right trigger, which goes all Metroid, and you squish somehow turns around into this little ball. I mean, if you see what squish actually is, is that little figure in the ball there. So quite why when he's in his true form. This is all like this, I, I, I don't honestly know. And the final ability that he's got is if you hold the X button down after you've collected five of these uh, glowing orbs, you can plow through obstacles such as spiked, um, spiked plants which would kill you. As you can see at the end of the level there, you're ranked on time for gold, silver and bronze time. And as you can see also on the screen here, that tells you if you've got all 50 crystals or not. And the icon on the left there is a color token. There's a token on each and every level. So we're going to the second level. Again, like I say, you have to press bizarrely left trigger and A to, um, to access it. And this level is again, it's just it's just pretty standard uh, platforming fare. There's not an awful lot to it. I mean, you have enemies here which do kill you, and you get reset to the start of the level. Now, the annoying aspect of that is if you're going for the timed levels, which you have to if you want to go for all the achievements, if you try to get the gold times. When you die and get reset to the start of the level, it doesn't reset your time. So you see, you have 28 seconds have died on, and I start on 29 seconds. I mean, what's the point of that? I mean, for, for ease of the player, that should reset you back to zero. I shouldn't have to go into here and actually change it in a very horrible menu, which has a horrible color selection. So I don't even know which one I'm picking there. And reset the level manually like that. For, for games like this, there should always be a quick restart button where I can instantly press a button and quickly walk back to the start of the level. So yeah, it's very frustrating when you're going for your gold times that you do have to reset everything manually every time you do fail. So we're just going along here collecting the uh, collecting the jewels there. As you can see, it's pretty standard, pretty standard fare. There's nothing really that complicated to it. I mean, the graphics are very basic. Uh, it's definitely got uh, Shouts Mobile game to me. Just the way it's uh, the way it's completely set up there. And I know we didn't collect all the crystals there, but it's just really to just demonstrate what's going on there. The gold times as such are not that hard to get, and it's just a simple case of repeating each level to uh, get the crystals first time, get the token first time, and then then do your speed run to to get your gold medal. I'll show you another level now. So this is where we get some more things to collect. Again, basic wall jumping. This one has multiple routes. So you do have to go both routes if you're going to get all the crystals in one go. But yeah, it's it's not exactly taxing stuff. It's not exactly uh, reinventing the wheel there. I think that was a different exit. 
and what I originally found. And in fact, it is. I got an achievement for it. There you go. I got the road not taken, which is found the alternate exit in Hidden Hollow. So that's something I didn't know about until I did the review here. That there is hidden exits during the level. So we'll we'll, um, we'll have a look. This is the first hub world anyway. I've not progressed very far in it as of yet. Uh, we'll feature some more of the levels uh, later on. But uh, we'll, we'll do a level I've not uh, I've not touched as of yet. I've not done tunneling, so let's let's have a look into the world of tunneling. Okay, this is so. This is a new thing here. So we've got to go in the Metroid Ball. It's just a case of zooming through. Oh, that's going to kill us. Okay. We've got enemies here with spikes on, which we can jump on. Basic stuff yet again. Down we go. Oh, no, I didn't like that, did it? So we've got to turn. Th no, how do you get in here then? No. Okay, like that. That's very temperamental. That's going to uh, mess up a lot of speedruns because each and every time I did the exact same thing. And just on one occasion it decided to go in, the others it didn't. So, have I managed to get all? Oh, is have I got all the crystals? I've got forty-four. See, it's not going in that. It's not going in the hole, which is annoying. And there's the token. So this is a pretty straightforward level. Be interested to see what the speed run time is. Speed run time is twenty seconds. Okay, so it's. <coughs> It's just too basic. It's just there's just not enough, not enough to it. I mean, we'll unlock that level there, and we're going to the next world, the Windy Hills. It just doesn't do anything that countless other games have done. Really, it doesn't really scream, you know. It doesn't really make you want to go out and buy it. There you go. I died. <laughs> just so uninspired and this this, this is a bit annoying this, this windmill section here I've, I've literally got no air control once that launches me I am seemingly in the, the hands of the game there but it's not going to deposit me on a on an enemy okay so so there's as um, as, as whatnot down there is this token so Okay, there we did it. That, that wasn't that difficult, but you, you've got very little air control. So literally, once that's oh my word! So once that's launched, you it's a case of uh, you know wait and see what's going to happen. Now, how am I supposed to get up here? Like that, I guess. Oh. See, no air control, once that had rebounded me off there, I had no control over it whatsoever, which is a bit bad really, because uh, all the best platformers, or even all the, you know, any decent platformer anyway, has, uh, has good air control. So you join us on the first boss level, if you can call it that, and a lot of the game's problems are reared ahead in this one level, such as kind of game design. This first part of a level shouldn't even be there, you should just start on the boss fight. But then we get the issue of when the screen accelerates, your character gets a massive momentum boost, like there. That just happened there, he just speeds up enormously, and you have to try and compensate with that. But since you've got zero air control, then that's very, very difficult to do. So it's it's you've constantly battling me. I mean, as soon as I jump forward there, I'm literally pressing the opposite direction to compensate and hope that I land on the actual platform, which is you shouldn't be able, shouldn't have to do that. Then we get to this actual fight itself, which is a very tricky fight because first of all, figuring out what you got to do, the game doesn't actually tell you, but you've you've literally got to hit these uh, hit the, hit these buds to bounce yourself into the. Uh, jellyfish, I want to call it, but again, due to not very good game design, it doesn't actually doesn't actually show you, give you any time to actually react to where the damn thing's gonna appear. So that becomes a massive, massive issue. I mean, you've 
it is no like uh, sound there's no like uh, slight appearance of it on the screen so you can uh, start to dash in the opposite direction it's just instantly bang on the screen and if you're in the wrong place there's no way you're gonna get out of it not in a million trillion years no chance in hell getting away from it it's just absolutely silly it's just very poor very poor game design bosses are supposed to give you that window of opportunity to actually attack them or indicate where they're going to attack so you can dodge them if you're not it's just it's just a ridiculous exercise See what I mean? I was stood there, no chance to, to react to it, to, to dodge it at all. If I'm stood in the wrong place at the wrong time, you're literally dead. It's just really poor game design, really. And adds to frustration. It's going to make it make you want to stop playing it. So you're in the second world now and it doesn't really change it up that much to be honest with you. I mean, uh, you have these now branches, these kind of shrines I'll call them, I don't know if they are shrines, which give you different, change you to a different colour and give you different attributes, different abilities, but it's pretty much the same same thing if I'm honest with you it doesn't really change things an awful an awful lot in in the way the gameplay you still got the same very basic uh, gameplay mechanics you just uh, you just have the ability to go through these uh, holy trees uh, not as in spiritually holy but as in trees that actually have uh, holes in them uh, like so and that's literally the entire crux of the power you've just obtained. Um, just adds another barrier in the way to your progression, really. And there's that awful screen acceleration again when you scroll. It shouldn't change the momentum of your character, but it damn well does. It's so annoying. And I will admit the second level of this is miles better graphically than the first level, but we're still we're still very basic. We're still not, you know, still nothing brilliant or um, you know unique. It looks all basic, standard, standard stuff really. And to be honest with you, a lot of people won't actually get this far in uh, in the game. That they give up through frustration and probably bore them uh, a long time before before now. So as I say, there's not an awful lot of redeeming features and I, I really really hate ragging on games, I, I really do, I don't like bad mouthing games because I, I know making a game is not the easiest thing to do in in the world but um, this is just no redeeming feature, uh, we're not knowing the actual price as well if it's, I mean if it's anything more than uh, you know, like 2 99 to actually buy it's, it's definitely not worth the money so unfortunately for Squish and the Corrupted Crystal I'm going to have to give Give it an avoid. I just don't see any reason why you need this game in your life, really. Even if it goes on a very, very deep sale as well. Uh, if it is priced at the same price that it is on Steam, which is this was a ridiculous 10.99 for what this actually actually is. I hope you enjoyed the review. Please remember to hit the subscribe button at the end of the video, and I will catch you on the next review. Thanks for watching.